So today I'm going to show how I create a prop mold for uh, VA, the F1D prop clubs. Um, I'm going to start off here first by cutting some plastic to cover my work surface. good enough for what we need. The next step is to uh, bring out the mold itself. Now this is an aluminum mold that was milled by another modeler who is a machinist and has access to a CNC machine to be able to do these at work. I'm lucky to have very good friends make things like this for me. Um, I'm going to start off here by uh, using a little bit of Pardol number no. 2 wax just to uh, cover the surface of this. And it doesn't really take much. It's already been waxed and used a couple of times. And I'm just going to put on a fairly thick layer. And that's that. Now I put the paper towel underneath it, mainly because when I'm doing this later, there will be some drippage. Uh, and it'll go down the front and the back and the sides of the mold. And when I'm letting it dry, uh, I don't like to have it stick to stuff. So let's back up to the side, do this. Uh, so the way I start off, the first layer is going to be you can use between six, seven, eight layers of fiberglass. Now these are sheets that are cut to the size. It's about three inches wide and 10 inches long. Um, so I said six or seven layers. So I'll do seven for this one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put the other ones aside. So. This is what we're going to start off with. So first step is just sort of get those uh, off the side. And then I'm going to grab a small mixing cup. I have here some craft sticks uh, that I'm going to use. Popsicle sticks. Uh, I very often use uh, acid brushes. These are, get them cheap at like Harbor Freight. The last thing is to be sure that you have gloves to protect yourself because this is really isn't stuff that you want to get on your hands all the time. Uh, for the laminating resin, I am using some old stock of MGS, what is this again, L335, and uh, hardener H340. Now this mixes uh, to a one to two ratio by volume. So in this I'm going to look for about, let's see, 20 grams or 20 milliliters. So it's about two thirds of this. So what I'm gonna to look to do is add around to do this right. The best way to do this is a little bit more. So I'm gonna add uh, 7.5 milliliters. So it'll end up being around 22, maybe even slightly higher. See some of the crud that gets built up on this, off on the side, and then this is the epoxy. It looks like I went slightly over to 7.5 mark, so I'll just go to uh, a little bit above 20, so between 20 and 25, where the actual resin 
and that looks good. Let's put it off to the side. So now when I'm making prop blocks these days, since I don't have any wood uh, to, or I can't get the, the blades that I need to cut the wood ones anymore, I'm doing this exactly in the same way for uh, one of the, just one layer, and I usually do seven or eight layers of the three ounce cloth on it uh, in order to build it up properly. And then I just use uh, usually a dowel uh, in the back in order to be sure it's stiff and straight uh, to be able to build off of. So it took a couple of seconds to mix this up. Now this is basically has a, has similar physical properties to the other uh, MGS resin we use for the uh, actual carbon fiber uh, outlines. Uh, it cures to the same uh, 176 Fahrenheit uh, properties, so, or 176 for 15 hours uh, in order to cure completely. And so it's a very similar resin, so it actually works out really well to use this resin uh, as a base for the actual molds for carbon outline props. Plus it was almost free so when I got it, so you know, I can't complain about that. <clears throat> I have way more than I need here. I don't really need to be messy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some out just straight on here. And then I'm gonna add a layer of cloth should be able to see that come through pretty easily, pretty well. And as I move the brush over the top, you can see it kind of all goes in. All the way around. I didn't probably put quite enough to make that first layer nice and juicy. And you really want the first layer or two to be kind of juicy. See the little snot that comes out? I just kind of put it off to the side. That ends up all getting thrown out at the end of this anyway. So. No big deal if you get a little fiberglass booger here in there. So now I'm going to look for a piece that I want to have on the inside of the mold. This one looks really good and smooth, so I'm going to keep that one aside. Then I'm going to put the other ones on. Oops, a little bit unaligned. Oh, I see the one on the bottom is a little bit bigger than the other. As you can see most of it, you just kind of stipple it a little bit with the brush and it all comes through. You see a little bit of uh, bubbling in there. Usually if you stipple it a bit, it'll come right through. And it's not really that super duper important here. Mostly it comes out in this process anyway. The one thing I haven't done yet is actually get out a card. I will need that in a little bit. I usually use like old credit cards or driver's licenses or sometimes I forget to to turn in hotel keys, and I use those, you know, anything I can use to uh, do that part. Okay, it looks good. I'm gonna need to add a little bit more for the next. And...
little bit of blue right there. Starting to look really good. Almost done. Next to last. See, it's not nearly juicy enough for the last layer. Pour most of this on. See, so got mostly in. Put this last layer on. Most of the epoxy through here, just on this. milliliters or so extra. Now there's a little bit of, a little bit more boogers that I call them. Now that actually looks really good. I don't think I'm going to need to hit it with a card today because I used enough epoxy on it. I had about five milliliters left over. Usually it takes between 15 and 20. I'm going to pick this up. Put this aside. Grab this over here again. And I'm just literally going to lay it on the top. Now, what I like to do is kind of hit it in the center first. And then you just kind of rub it with your fingers to kind of get it in place to be where you want it to be. The key here is going to be the main thing you're going to want to be sure of is that you have the surface as smooth as you can get it. Uh, for this, we will sand it between uh, the second and third layer. But we want this to be smooth. We don't want any boogers on it, although we can get most of those out and if you have any fingerprints in here where there's like a dip in the epoxy you're going to want to work on that a little bit to try to be sure that it doesn't actually cause any problems. Now one of the bigger things you're going to see on these is that on the edges it may tend to want to rise if it does just press it down, try to get a little bit more epoxy in that area, press it down. Um, you just want to be sure that it doesn't ride up. And see what I'm doing. It's just kind of working it until I'm really happy and satisfied with what the finish looks like. Now, if it's a little bit over or under on one side or the other, it doesn't really matter so much. It more matters that you have where the uh, line is going to be that's important. Now, there's a little bit of a part, a little bit here that's coming up. I just dip my finger in the resin and I'm getting it nice and wet because usually that's enough to adhere it to the surface in that spot and that's all we want. And that way as we kind of turn this we can be seeing a little bit better um, this being the base over here, if your line goes like this for your for your your carbon, you just want to be sure that anywhere um, that it's going to be, there's no bubbles. It's going to touch just fine. Yada yada yada, and it's okay.
The other thing I like to do is just to be sure that for measuring purposes that one end is actually on, on this side uh, at the base so I know exactly where the zero line is um, just so I'll be okay. Um, I'm not really that worried about this spot here because it is coming up slightly. I think it'll be fine. I just have to move it back in place. Like I said, the first layer is really juicy. Looks like I have a couple of bubbles forming, so I'm just kind of pressing against it and I'll smooth out the epoxy again. As I was holding it in place, it kind of does some weird things. And the better this surface is, the less you'll have to worry about later. my dog Jack barking in the background. And that's it, that's layer one. Paper towel, sometimes it doesn't want to come off completely. And that's okay, you can just get it out with a little bit of heat later after we're all done. It actually got stuck a little bit to the top when I uh, Stuck it onto the radiator. Uh, it's probably a better idea instead of just using a paper towel to put a little piece of plastic down there just to be sure you don't get anything like this, but yeah, it's not a big deal. The <clears throat> it's, it's hard already, actually, uh, after 24 hours, but it, feels st it still feels a little bit sticky in places, which is typical for this particular resin. Um, that's why I have to post cure it after each cycle. <clears throat> so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out uh, my little post curing uh, unit. It's a little deeper temperature controller, and I just basically put it inside here and make sure that the temperature uh, controller is on the other side or the, the actual temperature gauge is on the other side and you can go ahead and just put this inside I'll take a couple pictures for the top to annotate this a little bit better I'm going to take this and go ahead and plug it in I believe it's already set to 176 there. Apologize for not showing the actual controller here, but I have to move it a little bit out of the way uh, in order to fit it to where the cord it can plug in. Uh, this is all that's really required. Just go ahead, you put this in. And then you let it cure like this for about the next uh, 15 hours or so. And that'll give you the nice post-cure that you're looking for so it's nice and hard afterwards.